I'm usually not a person that does videos like this, you know, like when a person passes away and but I feel like if I don't, I'm going to regret it because recently, you know, Max Foncito passed away yesterday. I heard about it a few hours ago. And I feel he was just too significant of a actor to not make a tribute to. Now, the thing with Max Moncito, you know, he, he lived a long life. He was in over a hundred movies. It would, if I was going to recount, like, every movie he was in, that would take forever. There's plenty of people, they've probably seen one of his movies and they didn't even realize it because you know, he was in The Exorcist. You know, he was he was in Conan the Barbarian, the original with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was even in the unofficial James Bond film, Never Say Never Again. You know, played Blofeld. And even uh, Star Wars, Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. He's in that for a brief bit. But those weren't the movies I was thinking of when I heard about his passing. The first movies I thought of were his films that he did with the famous Swedish director Ingmar Bergman, especially you know, Seventh Seal, especially considering how much that movie deals with death and stuff. You know, that was one of the first movies I thought of when I heard he passed away. And I guess I'll start with that one. You know, I'm just gonna talk about some of his movies. You know, because because the thing with Bergman is. I think his films are amazing. I think his films are excellent, but I I don't know how I would be able to do his films justice because they're just... He's probably the greatest film director that ever lived. I One of them, anyway. Maybe I should just do a video on Bergman at some point, but I, I, if I start talking about Bergman, I'm going to lose the point entirely. But he was in... Max von Sydow, he was in some movies directed by Ingmar Bergman, who, if you ask me one of the greatest directors that ever lived. And the first movie I saw of Bergman's was Seven Seal, which starred Max von Sydow. He plays a character, a knight, who is just wandering around just aimlessly, doesn't know what he's going to do. You know, he's, like, lost his faith in God. You know, that's one of the main... That's one of the things of Bergman's films, is they're very existential, they're very, like, a lot of them are very depressing, too. Like, they deal with very deep, heavy themes, and Seven Seal is his most famous film. You know, it's probably the most iconic film he made, because of just all this, because the thing most people remember about the film is the iconic scenes of Max von Sydow playing chess with death, you know, it's one of the most referenced in film history, probably, at least in terms of international films, and it's a very, very deep movie, like, very, like, because it, it talks a lot about death, and also a lot about life, too, you know, it's about, it's about death as much as it is about life, you know, and it's very beautifully shot, too, and Max von, C Max von Cito, he's great in the film as well. It's not my favorite Bergman film or my favorite Max von Sydow film, but it's definitely a movie that if you haven't seen it, you should definitely see because it it's like it's like one of the most famous international films like ever made and one of his best films, one of his best performances, uh, The Virgin Spring, which that's a really dark film. Probably I don't know if it's because Ber that's the thing with Bergman, like his films are. A lot of his films are very, very bleak, very dark, and that is what, that one, I don't know if it's the most, I don't even know if it's the most shocking either, but it's very shocking, you know, there's a rape scene in it, you know, that's, the main plot of the movie is about these two sisters, they're trying to go to church, you know, they're like walking to church, and then they end up meeting some hooligans in the woods that harass them, and Max von Sydow, he their father he finds out about it there's this really great scene of him getting ready to go 
gets ready to like go get these guys and there's like this really cool scene with him in a tree he's like pushing on the tree and like kind of like he's wrestling with the tree almost it's really it's a very beautiful shot too like i i i, I don't know if i want to spoil it though like because but the ending to that film is also really excellent it's one of i think it's one of cedo's best performances because you just feel his despair just over what happened to his you know to his daughters and the stuff they went through and it's it's a very intense movie it's but it's very beautifully shot too hour of the wolf that was another really great ingmar bergman film hour of the wolf was again another one of his best performances he is he's this artist who he draws a lot of sketches and he like lives with his wife, played by the great Lee Bowman. And they just they they live in their little shack out in the middle of like nowhere. And the movie is just over the course of it, he just becomes more and more mentally unsound, like as it progresses. A lot of people consider it Bergman's horror film, which I I, I don't know if I'd call it a horror film. It's definitely intense and very psychological. I don't know if I'd call it a horror film. There's definitely elements of horror in there. Like, I remember this really. There's a, some disturbing imagery in it, but I don't know if I'd call it a horror film. I'd call it great, definitely. That was, like, that was one of the Bergman films I remember impressing me the most when I first saw it. And I remember thinking, it, this, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Then I saw Persona not long afterwards, and... Persona might be the best film I've ever seen. Not even kidding. It it could very well be the best one. I mean, but I'm not going to talk about Persona because that would take a whole other that would take a whole other video. And I don't think I don't think Max von Sydow is in it either. So for me though, I think my favorite film that Max von Sydow made it's also up there in terms of Bergman films as well. Shame. Shame was, it's a war film, except it doesn't really focus much on the conflict itself, like why the war is being fought. It is very, very ambiguous, which I like. About it, It's about Max von Sydow and his wife, played by Lee Volman. They live in, you know, in their house. They're musicians. You know, they play the violin occasionally. And they're just caught in the middle of this struggle you know all the all the houses around them are destroyed and it's just the whole movie they're just trying to get away from this like conflict that's going on and they just no matter how hard they try they just cannot escape they're just trapped there and the imagery in the film is it, it's, it's very depressing it's very very emotional and the acting is just outstanding from everybody it's and you just feel so bad for these people too for Max Moncito and Lee Volman that just you know they're just trying to live their own quiet life and they just can't you know there's a great scene where they're like back of their farm and like trying to like fix up the yard and stuff and they just start yelling at each other and it's just it's really it's a really powerful movie yeah. it was so good in fact that like i i was i was i was taking a creative writing course at the time and i was having trouble coming up with a poem for it and then i watched that movie and i'm like oh my god there's so many good images in this that it would make for a great poem i think so i wrote the poem and based it a bit off of a bit off of that movie and also a bit off of Platoon as well. Again, that movie I, I can't recommend it. I know I know there's there's actually I was surprised that there were, there were some people they didn't consider it one of Bergman's better films. I think it's one of Bergman's best actually. I would put that in his top three. I don't know if it's as good as Persona, but it's definitely up there. I think in terms of his films. But yeah, I, I couldn't just not say anything about this guy's films, you know, because Max Moncino, there's a reason Bergman used him, 
many times. He was in, like, I think he was in 11 Ingmar Bergman films. I don't know if that's the most of any of the actors he's worked with, but, and there's a reason, too. He is amazing in these films. He's amazing. He's one of those actors that just, you know, he just whenever I see a movie with him, I know, okay, I'm going to get a good performance out of him at the very least. And it really sucks that he's gone now. I mean, thankfully, he was in a ton of movies. You know, there's plenty of actors that they were deprived of that. You know, James Dean, he only made three films. Bruce Lee, he only made like four movies. You know, there's plenty of actors that they never got the chance to make as many movies as this guy did, and and he was definitely worthy of it. He was just outstanding. So yeah, um, I also felt obligated to make the just just because of how these films influenced me, not just as a person but also as a filmmaker myself. Um. When I made my short film, I took a lot of influence from The Seventh Seal, especially, you know, like, the chess game, you know, that was The Seventh Seal, and also for a photography class, I, for the assignment, I couldn't think of an idea, and then I came up with the idea of a skeleton that <laughs> hung himself after losing a chess game, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was kind of a morbid image you know <laughs> kind of darkly humorous though but you know it was again the seventh seal kind of inspired that you know and i feel like the seventh seal is just that's gonna be what he's whether i like it or not whether he liked he liked it or not that was probably going to be the film that he was remembered for the most especially now that he's you know dead in that film one of the main characters is death and and that's basically like what the movie's about like i mean it's unavoidable now you know i don't know what else to really say i mean the guy he had had an impact on me definitely very well regarded by his peers i mean again like i mentioned there there's a reason bergman used him so many times you know same with lee Bowman. and it makes me sad too because like a lot of these very wonderful actors that are, you know, they're no longer with us, you know, because we also lost uh, B.B. Anderson last year, you know, another wonderful actor that worked with Ingmar Bergman. Bergman himself, he's been dead for a while, you know. Basically, what I'm saying is, like, definitely watch some of these movies, definitely, uh, and I know I probably I probably rambled during most of this, but I I guess I'll just leave with a clip from the Seventh Seal. You know, I mean, I can't think of anything better to do. You know, and I think that's just the most fitting because, like I said, Seventh Seal is not my favorite Bergman film. It's not my favorite Max von Sydow film. But when I heard he died, it was the first one I thought of. It was the first thing I thought of. Because again, the imagery I think goes with it very well, and it just makes the most sense to just include a clip from that. Vem är du? Jag är döden. Kommer du för att hämta mig? Jag har redan länge gått vid din sida. Det vet jag. Är du beredd? Min kropp är rädd. Inte jag själv. Vänta ett ögonblick. Så säger ni alla. Men jag lämnar inga uppskor. Du spelar ju schack, inte sant? Hur vet du det? Ja. Oh. Jag har sett det på målningar och hört i visorna. Ja, jag är verkligen en ganska skicklig schackspelare. Du kan ändå inte vara skickligare än jag. Varför vill du spela schack med mig? Det är min sak. Det har du rätt i. Villkoret är att jag får leva så länge jag står dig emot. Spelar jag det matt, förger du mig. Du fick svart. Det passar ju bäst så. Intressant.